What's up, Rock Online? My name's Justin. This is my beautiful wife, Susanna. And today we're going to do our recap on the book of Judges, Judges chapter 1 and 2. So before we get into that, I just want to remind you of a time in history where Israel's is roaming the desert and they and they finally see what they think is the land that the Lord has promised them. So Moses sends out 12 guys to go do some recon work. And when they come back, two people come back with with a uh, positive story out of all 12 only two people these two people are joshua and caleb and they show up today in judges one chapter one and two so in the first chapter of judges we have a kind of another two-part story one part talks about caleb and how he puts out a ransom for an enemy king's head and then in the process he gives his daughter away and and he just kind of blesses her in that moment the next part talks about how the lord hands over the enemies uh, for Israel in like nine different uh, nine different tribes and examples it gives us where the Lord says, "Hey, I defeat these people for you," but at the same time, at the same time, the Israelites go and uh, still do small disobedience in the process. I didn't even when going through it. I didn't even notice there was a disobedience until afterwards. But anyways, when we move into chapter two we go back into another two-part story. In this part, Joshua, the same guy that did the recon work and led Israel the second half, now dies in this chapter. And the other part is, is now, now Israel's little disobediences turned into great disobediences, and now the Lord shows his disapproval. And now I'm going to let Susanna kind of give you what she gleaned from it. Yeah, so one of the um, the things that that came up to me came up for me as I was reading this chapter um, was just thinking about um, like the times where we're the most successful in our lives. Um, so there was a point in our lives where Justin and I were just really thriving. It was a, a season of harvest, and I just remember after a service um, at our previous home church, the Lord prompted Justin and I to go up and ask for prayer. So we walk up to one of our elders who we absolutely love and just, he was a leader of our home group back then. And um, we just said, hey brother, we, we'd like to ask for prayer. And he says, hey, you know, tell me what's going on. And I'm like, we're just in a season of abundance and we just want to, um, we're just asking for prayer to remember where that abundance, where the blessings and the favor really truly come from. And that we're not relying um, or thinking or being deceived that it's through our own works. Um, and then also just be, um, ask for wisdom and discernment in, in seasons of success um, where we ask the Lord to highlight, um, you know, maybe there is an open door, an open window where the enemy can come in and, um, and start to sow lies um, or seeds of destruction and create chaos and, and division. Um, he was a little taken aback by that request, but, um, but really kind of understood where our heart was coming from, that we just didn't want to be blinded by our success and really truly rely on and know that our favor and provision comes from God. So do you have any questions for them yes. on Yes. So <laughs> I want to leave you with just some thoughts to chew on. Um, so just think of areas in your life where you're enjoying success. Are you still radically relying on God and obeying him in those areas? So I took a completely different turn today. So I'm, I've kind of alluded to it a little bit, but what really stuck out to me was the little failures. Um, they're like, so all these failures were really kind of like normal in society, like taking people to be your, so like, for example, like Judah teamed up with Simeon, like take a, take a partner to battle. No, the Lord actually wants you to do it on your own and trust him. Or Ephraim allows Canaanites to live with them. Mm -hmm. Or Zebulun says, you know what? I'm going to make the Canaanites my slaves and make money off them. Well, these are all things I, I like to call walking in like, well, I guess in this instance, this is disobedience, but I think there are like instances in our lives where we have, where we allow ourselves to walk in God's permissive will instead of his perfect will. So they're like little things where like God allows us to do something like, Hey, maybe, uh, he allows me to watch this, but maybe I react a certain way to it. Or maybe, or maybe it's, I drink something that I'm allowed to, but maybe I don't react so well with it. 
or say something. There's a bunch of different little things that you could do that end up some, that could be something end up in something really large, like even people you talk to. But that's kind of my thing: is what are those little what are those little hedges that you should place in your life that you're not? Those little things that you're allowed to do that you personally shouldn't do. I just want to challenge everybody to recognize what those are in your life and find a way to cut them out. Give them to God. So that's kind of my encouragement. <laughs> Sorry if I hit you with some hard stuff at the end. But anyways, we love you. We love and you. we are so grateful to be part of this Rock family. And we will see you soon.